So there's a dispute in the law as to whether a sitting president can in fact be indicted. And the vast majority of legal scholars believe that a sitting president cannot be indicted and that the proper course of action um, is impeachment. I mean, that's the vast majority of legal scholars. Um, Bob Mueller is an incredible attorney. Uh, he's a very conservative, by the book kind of guy. And I do not believe that he will ultimately indict the president, not because there will not be sufficient evidence. In fact, I believe the contrary will be true but rather because he will conclude, like many legal scholars have, that a sitting president cannot be indicted. There's a lot of people, and I hear a lot of pundits, quote unquote, out there talking about how uh, Bob Mueller may indict the president. Well, he might, but I think the chances are very, very slim that he will. And so what I think is gonna happen is, consistent with your, with your approach and with your belief is, that Bob Mueller will indict a number of people around this president and ultimately will issue a report to Congress um, laying out the facts and the evidence and stating unequivocally that but for the fact uh, that Mr. Trump is the president, he would absolutely be indicted. And what's going to happen next? It's going to be up to the U.S. House to bring impeachment charges. Hopefully we're going to turn the House this November. Um, and ultimately, it will, it will be up, if he is tried, it will be up to the U.S. Senate to actually impeach him and remove him from office. And I don't think there's a lot of folks out there right now that believe that votes would be in the U.S. Senate because um, of the coward nature of numerous GOP senators and Republicans in Congress as it relates to uh, this president. They give this guy a hall pass morning, noon, and night. Um, and, and they seem to have forgotten love of country along the way, but I digress. So, so ultimately, I believe that's how it's going to play out. And the only way that the president will be removed from office would be if he was impeached by the Senate, if he's voted out of office in 2020, or if he resigns under intense scrutiny due to the amount of evidence either Mueller uh, comes up with or Michael Cohen. That's what 67 U.S. Senators have to vote to impeach, right? That's, so even assuming the Democrats retake the Senate by one or two and the Republicans will, it's going to take a lot of courageous Republicans to run across the line. You know, I, I don't want people to be disappointed as it relates to, to Bob Mueller because he, you know, he's, he is a very conservative lawyer and I don't think he's going to take a chance. You know, I'm, I'm a different kind of guy. I, I, I'd indict him and I'd make the Supreme Court overrule me. That's what I would do. <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. You know, I, I'd take my chances because I don't care about my legacy that much. I'd let the chips fall where they may. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm built from a, a slightly different place than Bob Mueller. And, and I think your legacy would be safe with us. Well, yeah. Steve, what did you want to... You know, but again, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see what happens. I think an important thing to note here is that there is a lot going on in that Mueller investigation that we have no visibility into. So, for example, Steve Bannon apparently is cooperating and has been in for lengthy interviews. A number of others close to the president have either been put in the grand jury or interviewed. So it has been a journey for, for organizations like ours that do this type of work uh, with immigrants on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when the election secured, uh, it came as a shock to some of us, but immediately that changed our trajectory, it changed our platform, it changed our strategic plan for the next four years, right? Because now we're reacting to, to different things, to things that we didn't see coming. We went from being proactive to reactive to defensive. Um, so, yeah, right now the, mo the most recent topic is the separation of children uh, from their parents, which stems from the zero tolerance policy, uh, which turns civil into criminal law for folks who are trying to cross into the United States at the U.S. Uh, South Mexico border. Um, and that has led to separation of children, which are now being placed throughout different, different areas in, in the United States. Um, there is no set, detailed, outlined strategic plan as to how our kids will be reunited with their families. Um, and that is the work that all of these organizations, not just Chief Lab, but many orgs throughout the state and throughout the country have taken on. Um, obviously, there's capacity that, that we have, and, and we only have so many attorneys in, in, our, in our organization that can be on the ground helping these folks. Um, but we're doing what we can. 
Um, we also uh, partake in other ways to inform the community, such as community education, um, because these are very issues that are coming just to life for some folks. We want to make sure that everyone is well informed about what is what is happening and what is going to happen down the line.